Hey, Pickens Chemists. So this is a brief video meant to help you out with the nuclear reaction stuff for today. And so I wanna call your attention to the other examples of types of nuclear reactions from the Why Does the Sunshine handout with the songs that we listen to in class. And um, I want you to see the types of decays and the type of fission here. And of course, earlier in the packet, we had all of these examples of fusion reactions, and we spent a good bit of time talking specifically about fusion. And I wanna focus down first on alpha decay. And I want you to notice that with alpha decay, just like all of these other decays, we start out with just one reactant and that that one reactant is turning into two products or more, okay? In alpha decay, just like all of these other decays, we can typically not only call these reactants reactants, but we will also generally call them the mother nuclide or the mother atom. We can call the big thing they normally change into the daughter. And we will call the other piece the decay particle. The decay particle should match the type of decay that we see occurring. So in alpha decay, we're seeing these helium atoms come out. They're not actually complete atoms. Really, we should be symbolizing them as four, two, and an alpha, okay? But again, I was trying to emphasize here that these alpha particles are really the nucleus of a helium four. Notice that in all of these reactions, whenever you have alpha decay, your mass number goes down by four between mother and daughter, and that your atomic number goes down by two between mother and daughter or parent. Sometimes it's parent and not just mother, okay? So the parent and the daughter. So when you take a look at this worksheet and you look through all of these reactions and you're trying to identify types of reactions or decays, Notice that here is a reaction where the mass number goes down by four. And if the mass number goes down by four, then this is almost definitely going to be an alpha decay. So you wanna go ahead and identify that as an alpha decay. Now you could also identify that as an alpha decay because after you fill in these atomic numbers, and after you identify this as an alpha particle, because it's coming out from radioactive decay, then that would also be a clue that this was alpha decay, okay? So the big thing with alpha decay is that your mass number always goes down by four between parent and daughter, and that your atomic number always goes down by two. The other thing is we typically only see alpha decays for very heavy atoms, promethium, is one of the lightest elements that is known to undergo alpha decay. In beta decay, the beta particle is really an electron, okay, but we're gonna symbolize it with this Greek letter beta. Notice that in beta decay, there is no change with the mass number, but that the atomic number actually goes up by one. This is because in beta decay, we actually have a neutron turning into a proton. When that neutron turns into a proton, to keep the charge balance, we have to be creating a negative charge. And to keep the particle balance, we have to be creating something that counters or goes against that electron in terms of types of particles. So then this is known as an antineutrino, whereas this is the beta particle. So again, when you look at these reactions here, and I think I flipped the sign on one of these just to try to emphasize that it was negative. We see here this zero, one minus. And so this is really trying to show us that that's a beta particle. And so this would be beta decay. And in beta decay, there should be no change in the mass number. And then whatever the atomic number is should actually increase by one. So this reaction is thallium, which is TL, not TI, and I would have a dot on it. And the atomic number is 81. And that atomic number goes up to 82, which ends then lead, PB, PB. 
So with all of these reactions, you want to be looking and trying to fill in the blanks that are here on this worksheet. Okay. This worksheet, the front, is really the assignment for today. When you continue through types of decay, you see positron decay. We briefly mentioned this in class already. Positron decay is what happens when a proton turns into a neutron. We see these kinds of decays occurring within the sun, actually, as a part of the CNO cycle. We can see this uh, nitrogen 13, which would be part of the CNO cycle. There is no change in the mass number, but the atomic number goes down by one, again, because a proton is turning into a neutron. So our mass number, our total number of protons and neutrons is constant, but we have lost one proton and gained one neutron. So when that proton turns into a neutron, we have to have something that carries that positive charge. And that's going to be the positron, which is this particle, which is also called an anti-electron. And that anti-electron then has to be balanced out by a neutrino. Now I have a hard time writing these reactions without including these particles. You're not going to be responsible for having those memorized. So again, there's plenty of examples here. Notice that whenever you see a zero and a positive one, that zero positive one is going to be our positron. You could put a positive charge there to emphasize that. But what that means is that our atomic number is going to go down by one. When that goes down by one, atomic number five is boron. And this would be positron decay. Sometimes people call it beta plus decay, but positron decay is a little bit more natural. On here, you also want to look and you want to make sure you can identify the fission and the fusion reactions. So remember that fission is always going to be one big thing splitting up into two halves. Those halves are normally somewhere around 90 and 120, 130, 140, okay? Um, this reaction here with uranium-235 is the one in nuclear power plants. And there is one more type of decay to talk about, which I won't mention in this video. I'll tell you guys about that in class next week. So you wanna take a look at these reactions. You wanna fill in the missing pieces in the blanks. You wanna identify the type of reaction or decay. If it is a fusion reaction, then you should be saying it is a fusion reaction. And then you also wanna be able to write these decays. So you would wanna be able to write copper 64. And if it decays by beta minus, then you know it's going to be zero and one minus and beta. And what else is the other product there? Okay. You also want to be able to draw this for a beta plus decay. And then you also want to be able to write a decay for a radon 222. So given a parent and a type of decay, you should be able to write the reaction. You should also be able to fill in the blanks on a reaction and identify the type of reaction. I'm never going to ask you to write a reaction for fission or fusion because there are just so many different kinds of products that could be formed. It's too many to try to work through. So I hope this is helpful. Please email me if you have questions.